Dear viewers, imagine that you are packing your bags and leaving the home in which you grew up. With just a couple of suitcases, you would leave everything else behind and start a new life in a new country. Today, I meet a very special person who left everything to come home. Welcome to Fascination Israel. The Gleis 17 Memorial in Berlin. Over 50,000 German Jews were deported from here during the Second World War. Most of them were murdered in concentration camps. On October 18, 1941, the first deportation train with 1,251 people traveled east on the tracks of the Grunewald train station. Roman Polanski is a Russian Jew, studied pianist, and now lives in Berlin. Gottfried Bühler meets Roman here at the Gleis 17 Memorial because the Holocaust casts a dark shadow on his colorful life. So, Roman, we are here at track 17 in Berlin, one of the most significant and important memorials. Do you have any victims in your family? Of course, uh, my aunt disappeared, perished in Odessa. She was visiting her uh, uh, uncle, and uh, then she didn't manage to escape, and she just disappeared. And my family, my grandmother and grandfather and my mother, they were in exile in uh, Siberia. They went through thousands of kilometers, and this was a very, very difficult journey under bombings of Nazi planes. Sometimes I heard my mother crying in the night because of this uh, you know, nightmare that she was there. She was very young, she was a little girl. She was born in 27, so she was uh, 14, years, 14 years old. And what is uh, unbelievable, really, is that I didn't know about this tragedy. Because in this state, in this former Soviet Union, there wasn't such a term in, like Holocaust. There wasn't in uh, curriculum, in textbooks, 
no, in no films, in no uh, newspapers, that six million Jews were just killed in this time. When did you discover this? Actually, I discovered it only when we came to Israel in 1990. Of course, coming to Israel, we discovered this uh, size of this catastrophe. When the war was lost and it was to everybody clear that in a few days Germany will surrender. And no matter what, this awful machine continued working, continued sending Jews to death. There were Berliner Jews, citizens of Germany. And uh, looking at these uh, signs and to see how many of them were sent to Treblinka, to Auschwitz, to Mauthausen, to other camps. It's not only because of they were sending there, but was to register all of them. They were registered. And just to imagine 1,000 Jews in a train, how they stood there. They were like, today I think animals treated better than in this time. Do you have any reports um, in regards of your aunt? Unfortunately, we didn't have any clue what really happened there and how she was uh, killed in Odessa. And uh, it's a very sad, sad story, but it's not a unique story, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I don't know any family of my friends, uh, Jewish friends, of course, uh, that uh, don't have something similar in uh, their families. So how is it for you today walking here in this special place? Uh, I can say that I have uh, goosebumps and um, this feeling that like I touch, it's not a memory, it's something alive. Like I touch these people and they can feel this angst, mm -hmm. this fear, mm -hmm. this terrible moment and uh, I'm very, very sad. I'm very sad. But one of the reasons why I am in Berlin, one of the reasons why I continue my work here, and one of the reasons why, why I came from Jerusalem to Berlin, you know, in Jerusalem right now it's approximately 20 uh, Celsius, very uh, backwarm. Uh, but here there is a population that came from the former Soviet Union, Jewish population, 250,000. Uh, our work is to strengthen their Jewish identity, to strengthen their desire to be part of our people, because they were disconnected for 70 years from all this. And uh, many of them, they think about Israel, but they don't know exactly what Israel is. Mm -hmm. For many of them, Israel is a small place in, you know, desert. Mm -hmm. And Israel is a modern country, strong country. And they want to bring this knowledge, this notion of Israel mm -hmm. to uh, these people. And I can say that I fully, I am part of them also, <laughs> because I'm, I grew up in Soviet Union. I am Jew and I chose to be in Israel. They chose to be in Germany, but we are family. We are family worldwide. In spring 2020, Roman Polanski was appointed regional director for Germany and Eastern Europe of the Jewish Agency, which is why he now lives in Berlin. But many years earlier, he had to manage the relocation of his family to Israel. So, Roman, more than 30 years ago, you left the former Soviet Union uh, and you settled over to Israel. Why Israel? <laughs> uh, maybe the first question, why we left? You know, it was uh, late 80s 
and uh, it was clear that this old Soviet Union is falling apart. Every nation started looking for their own identity, for their own home. Uh, Moldavians and Lithuanians and Ukrainians and others. The issue of nation, my identity, who I am, uh, suddenly became very, very important for everybody and for Jews as well. I was 35 years old and I suddenly realized that I define not only my destiny, I define the destiny of my children and my grandchildren and generations ahead. And uh, my feeling and my, my decision and my wife also, we want to be at home. We want to be not guests uh, in other places. And if in one word I can answer your question, why Israel, this word is belonging, to be part of. You know, human being uh, has very two contradictory uh, directions. One is to be free, to be independent. This is very important, but not less important to be part of, to belong. And I feel that I belong to this group of people, to my people. But I was lucky before going to Israel, I uh, learned and then I taught Hebrew. And from the first moment when I touched this language, my feeling was that I touched something familiar. Many of my students, they complained that this is so complicated and strange language. We write from right to left and uh, we write, uh, you know, with these strange um, letters. I think that I did uh, very good progress because after a year of learning and teaching Hebrew, I came to Israel and they started teaching in Hebrew in, uh, in Tel Aviv University. After one year? After one year. It's so amazing. It was, I think it was kind of destiny, it was kind of written there that I should be in, in this place in uh, uh, Israel. Uh, from my childhood, I always um, hoped and I dreamed, I dreamt to be a writer. But in Israel, I became a journalist and a very successful journalist. Journalist, radio journalist and uh, a newspaper journalist and even host of TV show. So I know that Israel is a place that helps you to discover yourself. Suddenly you um, understand that you have talents and you have abilities that didn't come in previous place. You studied music in the Ukraine and didn't you think about making music career in, in, in the Ukraine or? Look, I studied music and I studied theater and I accomplished two MA in uh, piano and in theater. But when I came to Israel, I discovered very quickly that there were more actors in Israel than public and more theater directors than actors. <laughs> and uh, there was a joke in these days, uh, not really a joke, it was almost truth, that if new Ole, new emigrant, steps out from the um, plane without violin, it means that this person is pianist. <laughs> Semitism and the hate onto Jewish people is um, racing more and more. Look, unfortunately, anti-Semitism and we see it uh, arise not only in Germany, in many other places as well. But in Germany, this is awful because Germany, with its history, should be so mm, sens sensible, so delicate in with this issue, and I see. Uh, how it uh, arouses and uh, I see what is interesting and I see how it uh, how Jews react to this. I will bring an example. 
we have a program which is called uh, Rent a Jew. Rent a Jew, this is a program with a very provocative name, by the way, uh, but it's for purpose. When young Jews, they come to uh, German institutions, to schools, to hospitals, to universities, and they speak about their Jewishness, and they say, look, I'm Jewish, but I don't have horns, <laughs> you know, and we don't suck blood. Mm -hmm. We have our traditions. So in today's Germany, it's kind of a courage to come and to say, I'm Jewish and I'm proud of myself and of my history. So this way we uh, eliminate some prejudice, but also this way Jews are more and more believe in their Jewishness. They're more strong in this. I uh, had a meeting with young Jews here in Germany. It was a year ago, ages um, 15, 22. It was about 60 youngsters there, and they asked them how many of you experienced anti-Semitism, whether it's uh, in uh, saying or in action, first, first hand. And I had an unbelievable answer. 85%. 85% of these young Jews, they experienced anti-Semitism in modern Germany, in their classrooms, uh, with their friends, in open spaces. So that was very, very troubling. times um, where German people at least uh, think about retirement, you decided to come to Germany. Why that? Actually, it derives from uh, latest events in Germany. We are worrying about rising anti-Semitism and the uh, terror attack in Halle. There was a feeling that uh, is needed the presence of somebody to help this community to struggle with all these challenges. And uh, as uh, you probably know, there are 250,000 Russian-speaking Jews here who came from the former Soviet Union. And uh, they are Jews, they are Russians, and they live in Germany. So for me, it was a kind of another challenge in my life to help them to reconnect themselves to their Jewish identity, to their Jewish history. And of course, to those of them who want to make Aliyah, to help them to make Aliyah. In today's language, Aliyah means the return of the Jews to the land of Israel. The biblical prophets speak of it. For example, Isaiah, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. It is only through modern Zionism that such prophecies are fulfilled. Since around 1882, historically the beginning of the first wave of Aliyah, around four million Jews from over 120 nations have come home to their promised land. This movement is absolutely unique in human history. In Jewish history, it even outnumbers the biblical exodus from Egypt. In my view, there are four major reasons for people to make Aliyah. One is push factor. And this can be the situation in this or other country, economic situation, social situation, political situation, or God forbid, war. The second one is pull factor. <clears throat> they speak, they think about their future. What is actually this country that they come, can propose, can offer them. Because, uh, you know, without job, without uh, home, you can be very Zionist, but <laughs> you, you need some basic things. And in this sense, our integration programs, programs of the Jewish agency, are very, very important. 
Then we speak about personal situation, grandchildren, siblings, relatives, uh, and others. And of course, the fourth very important factor is uh, closeness to the Jewish state. This feeling that Jewish state is my home. I belong to it. They make aliyah because they want to live in Israel. They feel that they're part of this country. I would like only to mention that in all what we are doing in this field, Christian organizations are our best partners and uh, I can say also friends. And I'm speaking about ICJ, Ebenezer International, Ebenezer Hamburg, Christians for Israel, and many, many other small and big organizations and churches who uh, help us to bring people home. This help is indispensable. This help is very, very important. And that's why our partnership with Christian organization is very, very tight. Are there any um, Jews in Germany who are thinking about leaving Germany? In uh, 2014, we had 102 Olim from Germany. In 2018, we had 197, almost doubled itself. Several years ago, to speak about Aliyah in Germany was kind of uh, taboo. Uh, today, people speak about it, people think about it. It's not taboo. You, people want, young people want to know more about Israel. How does it work? They have to learn the language. How do you integrate them? Uh, that's a good question. Um, actually, when they come, of course, they have uh, five months of uh, Ulpan, of Hebrew studies. Is it like an everyday school? Or? It's like everyday school, five, six hours every day. But we have also our Hebrew studies on the, in the field. For example, in the former Soviet Union, we have 6,000 students in our Hebrew studies there. So they learn Hebrew even before they come to Israel. And of course, it's uh, much easier. For me, uh, for example, this opened the gates of, Isra of Israeli society because I came with my language. And that's why very quickly I became a Hebrew teacher and then a journalist and then a chief of staff of a minister, so on, so on, so on. About uh, uh, working, people have to work after half a year, after several months, they have to earn money because uh, uh, state helps them, but not forever. Uh, but uh, it's very important to start doing something, not only to wait until somebody will help you, but to do something actively, and then you find different opportunities. Many people say that the return of the Jewish people from all over the world is one of the biggest miracles in these days. Do you think there is a, a connection to the old prophets in the Bible? I think that this is a fulfillment of old prophets. Look, it's a miracle not only uh, people going to Israel. Israel itself is a miracle. How this state could emerge in 1948, how he could withstand all these wars and all these attacks, how the language that we speak uh, and which I love so much, Hebrew, how this language, revival, it's like a phoenix from ashes. Uh, all this is a miracle. And yes, I can say that it's fulfillment of prophets, of what was said in, in the Bible. Working in Germany, what is your, your biggest wish or your vision? My wish is to see here as many Jews as possible reconnected to their identity, to their roots, to their heritage. My work here is to strengthen their Jewish identity, their Jewish pride.
I would like to read something from the Bible, from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall join himself with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the peoples shall take them and bring them to their place. And dear viewers, this is exactly what Roman Polanski was talking about. That the nations should cooperate in this great heavenly enterprise and assist the Jewish people in returning to the land of their forefathers. If you would like to have more information about this extraordinary Aliyah project, please visit the website icej.org. Thank you for joining us today, as Fascination Israel has again shown something that you usually don't get to see otherwise. May I ask you to help us with your donation so that we can continue to do programs like this. For today, I say goodbye to you from Berlin with a heartfelt shalom.